Hey guys, here is my 10 cards, one kit video from the Love From Lizzie June kit. Here I am showing you that I am just cutting my card bases. I'm using my tonic trimmer to just trim these at five. These are eight and a half by 11 and I'm trimming them at five and a half. The kit came with a piece of white cardstock, but I actually brought in my own white cardstock and saved that one because I believe the white cardstock Lizzie includes is Copic friendly, so or alcohol marker friendly, so I like to keep that aside. These panels I do trim up. I'm just showing you how they came, and I go ahead and trim them all up. So with this kit, I was really excited to try the little pattern builder, um, not the pattern builder, but the plaid builder stencil. So I wanted to jump right, jump right in with that. I'm using four different Distress Oxide inks, and this literally was my first time using it. So, I mean, I, I think I did okay. Um, just be careful when you're doing this that you're not crooked, because my pattern does end up being crooked. But no big deal, because the card's adorable. <laughs> so I believe that was Squeeze Lemonade. This is Shaded Lilac, and... Um, you know, I'm overlapping colors, and it all came out perfect. This one I'm actually um, including in the color challenge on Lizzie's blog. Last month was the first color challenge, and I had already done my 10 cards, so I didn't participate since I didn't have one that went with the colors. But this one is um, Show Us Your... Oh, goodness. I forget what it is. Show Us Your Stripes? Show Us Your Plaid? I don't know. I don't remember. But, um... This one I've included, long story short. Here is where I um, messed up. This is, oh goodness, I forget what color this is. Worn lipstick, maybe? Um, but I did my pink crooked. So my pattern's a little crooked. And I thought about cutting out this panel and cutting it crooked so then my pattern ends up straight, whatever. <laughs> but it's seriously not a big deal. I just kept it as is. So this kit is still available. If you're interested, I will have links below. Um, as a voiceover, it's Friday night, and I'll be releasing this video this weekend. So as of Friday, it's still available. So as you can see, a lot of the colors overlap. There's some spots that are a little muddy, but no one's going to notice, and I really am pleased with how this turned out. So I'm taking a circle-stitched die, and I kind of hang some of it off, adhere it down, then cut the edge off. And I'm going to put this little chipboard sticker that comes in the kit. It's adorable. And I'm going to go ahead and stick her on there. And then I have this stamp set while I adhere it down. It's MFT's More Essentials Sentiments. The Lizzie stamp set that came in the kit has a couple sentiments, but I kind of wanted to mix it up a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss the sentiment with some white embossing powder. Now as I was editing this video I realized I wasn't recording the end of this card. So here I'm going to have a still shot of what the card looks like since I don't have any more video. There are button dies I used to create that flower bunch and then I used a leaf punch from my stash to create the leaves and then I cut out the sentiment and put a fishtail manner on the end. So sorry about that. My camera's really been acting weird. I have a feeling I may have to ask for a new one for Christmas. It <laughs> gets a lot of use and it's kind of acting funny. So for card two, I've used some of the pattern paper that comes in the kit, the gingham print. I keep calling it plaid, but it is gingham. I don't know why I can't get the two straight. But anyway, I cut little stitched squares out and these stickers came in the kit. And these stickers are from a pack of either six or eight. So the two sheets you get may be different. But this is the one I got out of the two. And I'm going ahead and using three stickers and just adhering them to the square die, the square shapes I cut out. And I'm using some foam tape to pop them up. These stickers are also really good for planners if you're a planner person. So adhering those down. If you want to check out the unboxing of the kit, I will have it linked below if you're interested to see what what came in the kit since I kind of uh, these videos I just get right into the cards here I'm kind of fixing my spacing and then I hear that cute little sewing machine 
Whenever you're adhering like the three squares, do the top and the bottom first, then do the middle last because then you can figure out your spacing. I did mine a little backwards. So as I'm adhering these little chipboards, if they're layered at any point, like the little measuring tape is on top of the spool of thread, I added some dimensionals underneath to kind of give it extra support. And that completes that card. For card three, I absolutely adore this pattern. It's like brush strokes. And I thought it would go really well with a little palette of paint. Here I'm taking this t uh, long banner chipboard sticker. It fits just perfectly on a um, top folding card. It's really a side folding card, but then you flip it and it turns into a top folding and it's horizontal. I add a piece of a doily from my stash just to give it a little interest and go ahead and hear that down. And then I have this little stitched circle um, vellum piece that I just cut out just to add interest. No reason really. You probably can't even notice once it's adhered to the card. And then I go ahead and add the paintbrush and the little tube of paint. And what's nice about these chipboards is that they, they're self-adhesive, but they stick really well. I've had chipboards previously, not, not necessarily in Lizzie's kit, but I've had issues with sticking. I've had to add my own adhesive to the back. So this is my favorite card, and I love this girl. She was one of the panels from that 12 by 12 sheet. And I knew when I, make a car, when I made a card with her, it'd be fairly plain. So I was like, what can I do to kind of add a little something something <laughs> so I'm like okay I'm gonna take a huge risk and I'm gonna color her hair now the only Copic markers I own are the skin tone pack and I'll have those below because I figure I if I color people or brown hair this will work and I've said in previous videos that the Copics are expensive I'm never gonna get them I bought all my spectrum noirs but Oh my gosh, I get it now. I get it. And again, I will say I eat my words because Copics are awesome. And um, I'm going to purchase more slowly to kind of supplement my Spectrum Noirs because the Spectrum Noirs kind of lack in some color areas. Anyway, so I just used two colors for her hair. And it, can't, it came out perfect. Like the way you can flick those Copic markers, use the flicking motion, it's just so much easier than the Spectrum Noirs. But... Anyway, I'm so happy this turned out because I think her hair looks fabulous <laughs> and I'm really pleased with how I colored it. And getting the skin collection or you know any collection really, it kind of takes the guesswork out of trying to match the colors because I am clueless to that. So continued coloring her hair, finish it up. So happy the way this looks. This card I actually may keep for myself. I typically will list my cards in my Etsy shop and sell them or, or whatever, but this one I think I'm keeping for myself. <laughs> so love that. And I cut her out um, with a stitched rectangle die. And it, she fit perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere her. And then I went ahead and used that MFT... I believe I did um, stamp set. It may have been another one because it was going between the two. But it says, you're lovely. And then I die cut out the little button and I tied a piece of twine. The button is a die from a die that comes in the kit. And then the twine is just from my stash. I go ahead and add some Nouveau glitter uh, to her earrings and the flowers and her little hair bandana thing. And then I use some... I could not find my glossy accents. It's somewhere in my drawer next to me. But Hero Arts, a previous kit came with the same type of stuff. This stuff, it's just like glossy accents. I forget what they call it. So I went ahead and used this just to add a little bit of sheen and dimension to her earrings. Very slight. I just love this card. And then I just kind of tap it to get out the air bubbles and flatten it down. So for card five, I take this little panel Maker's Gonna Make and I just, I like the way it was kind of at an angle and I sliced it up so the edges match that angle. I 
And then I'm going to take another panel, and I like the car, uh, the flowers underneath. So I go ahead and adhere this down so the flowers are at the bottom. And then I trim it up and I cut the top off. The top is like lined. I wasn't sure what to do with that, so I just chopped it off. And I'm going to use, I like the button pattern, and I'm going to use that as my top portion of the card. And then I forgot about the lavender peel offs at this point. So I busted those out because they were under my pile of stuff next to me. Gosh, if you could see the small area I'm working with and the disaster around me. You probably could relate to be honest <laughs> so I go ahead and add the peel offs because I liked I like finished edges I don't like when papers meet and there's not really something there to kind of finish it off um, so I just and it would have been easier to do this before I adhered this to my card base but totally not a big deal I got it to work so trim off the edges of the peel offs and then I add this girl the the chipboard stickers had three girls and this is one of them go ahead and pop her down and then I put a little planner and then the pen on top of the planner and then this cute little coffee mug that matches the flowers. I didn't know what else to do with the coffee mug, so I thought, perfect, drinking coffee while you're planning your life away. So I added the little coffee mug. And then these Platinum Nouveau Drops are gorgeous. Love those. So added those. And I'm doing a little Amy R off camera where she's tapping the card to get the bubbles to kind of spread out, flatten out, get rid of the peaks, and that completes card five. So for card six, these cute little sewing machine patterns, I cut two strips out and I'm adhering it to the stripe pattern paper. And again, this paper, this is from the 12 by 12 sheet and it comes in the kit. So I go in and adhere these two down. And then I add again, those two pieces of paper meet and I don't like how it looks so I add the peel offs and then for this one I am using Lawn Fawns Sewn with Love. What's cool about this kit is that I had some crafty stamps to go with it so even though Lizzie's does come with sentiments it's nice to bring in your own stash to even stretch your cards further. I typically like to stick to the kit but I do so many 10 card one kit videos and to be honest they can be a little um, difficult and sometimes not the funnest. This was fine but sometimes kits can be a struggle for me. But being on the design team this is what's required so I try to make the best out of I can you know best I can out of the kit. So I've started slowly kind of incorporating my own things. It, like even if it's just a sentiment just to kind of give you guys more ideas because we all have a bunch of stuff we can use. Um, so anyway, I am using Lawn Fawn Sew With Love. It has um, a beautiful stamp set, but then it also has this die, so, and then it has buildable sentiments. So um, I love you so much or you're so cute, those types of sentiments. And of course, so is S-E-W. And I thought I went perfect with the sewing machines. So I cut it out using some pink cardstock. And then here I'm using some fun foam. Now, once I put this all together, I'm using some glue to adhere the paper to the fun foam. I'm like, I should have just adhered the fun foam. Why did I even do the piece of paper? But whatever, not a big deal. And so then I just pop that out. And I go ahead and adhere it to my circle stitched circle. <laughs> And then I'll adhere this. Oh, actually, no, first. I go ahead and stamp out in just black memento ink. And I, the camera is right where my head needs to be. So I take it off to the side, making sure I'm still in frame so you can see it, but so I can get right on top of it. So I stamp, I love you, and then the so, and then I stamp the much. So, 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 so. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's perfect. Oh, my God. It's Okay, I thought it was later than what it is. It's almost 11 o'clock, so I'm a little loopy. Anywho, go ahead and hear that down with um, 
Stampin' Dimensionals, and then I just take some, I think those are my glossy accents, who knows, I don't know, I need to organize so bad, but whatever. So go ahead and, how many times am I going to say so, oh god, put these little pieces, chipboard pieces, I think they're buttons down, and I do the little thimble, and I put a little um, Stampin' Dimensional on top, or on the side to kind of help support it since that sentiment piece is raised itself. And then there was these little pens, uh, straight pens, um, or straight pins, not pens. And I go ahead and pop those behind the circle. And then that, I believe, will complete the card. Yes. So for card seven, I am taking whatever this is, this piano. Oh, it's just a white piece of cardstock. Forgot what card this was. And I love this measuring tape ribbon. So I wasn't sure, like, it would have looked cute on the sew card, but I was like, I don't know how to incorporate it. So I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to wrap it around here. And I just, I sped this up really fast. Basically, you can see what I'm doing. But I just, and I trimmed the edges so there wasn't a lot of bulk on the back, but also everything that's on the back isn't going to be seen, so I don't want to waste a lot of the ribbon. So go ahead and adhere all that down. I laid it out kind of wonky, as you see, and then I go ahead and add just some scotch tape because the ribbon's pretty thick, and my ATG wasn't, it wasn't really sticking to the ATG gun. I had a, a few pop off off camera, so I went and added the scotch tape. And if you're anything like me, when you're dealing with a measuring tape, it typically looks like that. It's a big old tangled mess. So here's some fun foam, and then my battery died. <laughs> it died several times in this video, but my fun foam, uh, I cut it out to size. I added the double-sided tape because that seems to stick. Um, sometimes adhesive can be tricky with foam foam where adhesive won't stick to your card. Um, all these cards, by the way, and I always forget to mention it, but if you have watched my videos, they're always A2 size, unless I'm specifically doing a different size card, so five and a half by four and a quarter. So I cut this little panel out from that 12 by 12 sheet, and I used a square stitch die. Keep calm and make pretty things, and then here's my final little girl. I say little girl. She's a lady, little lady, and I go ahead and pop her down. And again, using those dimensionals to give her support. And then I pop down one of those little flowers from the chipboard pieces. So for card eight, I'm like, I better use one of these buildable ladies. So I go ahead, and again, I'm off to the side, sorry, but I had, I had to get it lined up. <laughs> and I could not see with the camera. So I go ahead and stamp her, and... Then I color her. I do, she doesn't have any, she kind of looks scary because she doesn't have any pupils. So I add a little bit of color to her eye and then I add, I go back with a memento marker and add little black dots to kind of add the pupil. So then I go ahead and quickly color her with the same, there's all the markers that come in the skin tone pack. So if you don't have Copics, um, go on Amazon and I'll link these below. Go on Amazon and get these because um, they're fairly priced or go to Michael's, whatever, use a coupon, but um, I don't think they're that bad on Amazon compared to the other markers, Copic markers. Anyway, so I color her, I stamp her out, and I actually had to sit overnight on this card. I put the card how I wanted it. I didn't like it because I'm like, oh, this is so plain, and I recently got a comment on my cards, my 10 cards, saying that they're very simple, and I'm like, girlfriend, I know. I know they're simple. <laughs> Um, I wish I had the time to really dive in and make 10 complicated cards, but I just don't. So I do keep the 10 cards, one kit, simple. Um, but I really did not like this card at first. So I laid it out, put it on my desk, went to bed. And then when I woke up in the morning, I looked at it, I'm like, it's not that bad. So just, if you are making a card and you're like, this looks like crap, just sleep on it because... It may look better in the morning. So I have, this is a Polaroid frame die I got from Your Next Stamp. And I went ahead and cut out from the pattern paper. I went ahead and cut a piece out. 
And I did color her shirt off screen. I just used some green Spectrum Noir markers and quickly colored her shirt. And I'm going to go ahead and stick her behind the Polaroid. I'll be honest, I wasn't sure what to do with her. I'm like, I don't know how to put her, incorporate her in a card. So I thought, well, I'm going to use this Polaroid die because make it look like a picture. And then I had a chipboard sticker that was a camera. So I'm like, this will work. So I go ahead and take this little piece of doily too. And just add that to the bottom just to give it a little interest. I don't know. That's what I say when I don't know why I added something. Oh, to give it interest. <laughs> Makes me sound fancy. Hmm? I don't know. So anyway, I'm taking my ATG gun and I'm just going around the whole frame. ATG gun's a little bit bigger, so I'm just folding the excess um, behind the frame. And then I'll go ahead and adhere her down. And I put her down straight on the card base. And I adhere her kind of wonky. I take one of these crocheted flowers. I really like those flowers. I'll go ahead and pop one down because why not? I'm just kind of going with it for this card. I used an oval stitch die and stamped out Crafty Girl. And Crafty Girl sentiment is part of the stamp set from Love from Lizzie. There's the camera. Go ahead and slap that down. And then I'll pop up the Crafty Girl sentiment and adhere that down. And I just adhere that straight. And then I will add one of these pretty little glitter hearts that comes in the kit and just pop that down. And that will complete this card. For card nine, I used a rectangle stitch die. And here's a stamp set. It's Stampin' Up's Crafting Forever. Also a good one to incorporate in this kit. It says we are cut out to be friends. And what's cute is that it kind of, you can use scissors with it. Get it? Cut out to be friends. So I've already used my scissor chipboard so um, that didn't work but like the stamp set has scissors the Stampin' Up one so it's adorable. Anyway go ahead and pop this up and adhere this down to my card base crooked. I've already cut the gingham blue and adhere that to my card base off camera and I pop this up and I've also cut these this is um, from dies this is cut out from with dies from the kit hello and I pop those up. I use the gingham pattern as well for these bigger flowers. And then I had these little flowers I cut out with a smaller button die. Again, I'm using my leaf punch that's from my stash. And I'm just cutting the stems off of them so I can easily tuck them behind the flower. And I just use glue dots to adhere these and I just kind of place them randomly around I wanted to keep this card really simple and really soft not much going on not too bright and as I'm looking at this I believe my whole panel in the center is crooked it's one bad thing about the gingham pattern and this is just in general any pattern like that and you have to be really careful because if the pattern is really straight it, everything looks crooked if it's off slightly so this is definitely off but I don't think anybody would notice as the recipient so then I go ahead and add these little flowers around and those bigger flowers I adhered with Stampin' Dimensionals right in the center and being the flowers have a lot of openings you can see the Stampin' Dimensionals right through them so I didn't really like that. I was trying to think what I could do to kind of disguise that a little. So I bring in some Nouveau Drops from a previous Lizzie kit and I believe they're like bubblegum pink or something and I add Oh yeah, I add this sweet little bow. I haven't used these bows yet, so I'm like, this will go perfect because it's so it's soft with the colors I used. So I just glue that randomly right there. And then I do add another glitter heart by my sentiment. 
So anyway, I bring in a bubble, I think it's bubblegum pink Nouveau drop. And I go ahead and add just a few drops to cut where those holes are, just to kind of disguise it a little. I mean, you can still see the dimensional, but being it's white, it's not too bad. So that will complete card nine. For card 10, I thought, okay, I'm going to bring back this stencil because I really enjoyed it. And then my camera went, in the middle of ink blending, my camera died. I'm like, well, I can't stop because I'm holding the stencil. Um, so I ink blended it in the um, scattered straw. And this is just regular distress ink. The first one I did was oxide ink, so it has a nice chalky look. But then this one is just your regular distressed ink. And I forget what this color is. It has left me. And I was kind of going for a masculine theme. I don't know. Since this um, car, this kit's kind of girly and crafty, I was like, let me try to see if I can get a masculine card out of this. So I had a gray card base left, and here I've cut out of black cardstock three of the Thanks sentiment, and this Thanks die is from my own stash. And I'm just adhering it on top of each other. And then I used some of the mirror cardstock in the kit to cut out the thanks sentiment as well. And I'm going to hear that on top. You just have to be careful with this mirrored cardstock because any little glue or anything on your fingers will stick the mirror cardstock and make it smudgy. So I used some gray cardstock that was a close match to my card base. Used my oval stitch dies to cut it out. And then I go ahead and adhere my thanks sentiment to that. This card is quite plain, but um, I think it, it, it makes a good masculine card. And I don't know too many men that are really care <laughs> about what card they receive. So sometimes simple is better. So go ahead and adhere that down. And then I add some of these, uh, some more Nouveau drops because I really like those. And I thought it went perfect with the gray and the mirror card stock. And then just smack it down again. And it really works. It's a really good method to get your Nouveau drops to kind of flatten out. And that completes that really quick and simple card. So here's a fast thing of what I have left over. Didn't even use the sequins. The sequins are beautiful, though. A whole, Almost a whole sheet of mirror cardstock, the white cardstock, peel-offs, ribbon, Nouveau drops, all that good stuff. So here are still a ton of paper left over. It's probably the most paper I've ever had left over in a kit. So here are some still shots. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what your favorite card was. As of filming, it's um, a little after 11 at night, Friday, the 1st. Um, the kit's still available. So I'm going to schedule this to go live this weekend. Hopefully it's still available if you're interested and you're just now seeing this kit. Um, the link will be below. Let me know what your favorite card was. I hope you guys enjoyed this, like I said. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.